Hi guys and welcome to Mentemi's YouTube channel. My name is Ali Narendran. I'm a CFA charter holder and also the founder of Mentemi Careers and I am also the chief trainer at Mentemi Careers. In today's video, what I'm covering is specifically Titan company and we've taken you down from the research framework on actually researching you through the assumption. This is the same stock that I have invested my money as well. So maybe the experience of learning uh, this tutorial will be much more live and much more real. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do care to subscribe and like because this will help just in sharing the knowledge with more students and more people around the world. And I'll see you again back in the class. Hi guys and welcome to this session of research framework. Now the reason why we are conducting this session is specifically to first educate you on the idea of how to do research because a lot of courses will actually teach you how to uh, create a financial model which is pretty obvious in terms of the mechanics right because step by step if you look at any of the DCF uh, valuation model most of the cases you know to create a DCF valuation model in Excel is pretty simple but what generally is missed out in the entire process is how do you actually research on the assumptions right of course over the course of other content which i'll be covering while making the titan dcf valuation model i'll be obviously taking you through my own research which will give you the clarity on how the research has to be done in case of your companies that you decide to do later right so first let's understand what exactly are we forecasting right so if you understand this step then it becomes pretty clear in a dcf model where should the focus lie on right including uh you know what research has to be done right so in essence if you are trying to put it in a nutshell then all you are trying to say is that you are majorly forecasting the free cash flow right because that is where the dcf valuation is actually going to take place right because you can't forecast each and every line item in the balance sheet and the income statement with the same intensity right because even if you do the effect on the valuation that you're going to get is going to be a minuscule number right so first and foremost the highest amount of attention has to be given to the forecasting of revenue because that is the major driver for increasing or decreasing your free cash flow right the second big assumption that has to be researched and has to be understand from the business angle is the capital expenditure right how much of the cash is actually getting used to fund uh, you know future assets because those future assets that you're actually going to buy today is finally again going to impact your free cash flow right third is the working capital accounts which are inventory payables receivables right majorly because this has a major impact on whether the cash flow will be negative or positive right so if a company let's say has a very high uh, receivable days which means that the company takes a lot of time to collect it cat uh, collect its revenue in terms of cash now that's going to have an impact because then you will not have enough free cash flow available and again that would finally reduce your valuation and finally debt uh, if in case the company has a lot of debt uh, and you are able to figure out what kind of repayment structures going to happen now debt is also a little more complex because you can also have leases in it which might appear to you as not debt but is actually debt right so that's the overall idea of what are we actually forecasting right let's move on now what do we do with the other items right so for example the cost of goods sold salary marketing dividends and taxes right these amounts actually don't change much as a percentage of the one big number which is revenue right so cost of goods sold as a percentage of revenue is going to remain constant now we are assuming here that the company is not a very new startup company just one two years in the business no we are not talking about that company we are talking about companies which are at least five to six years of experience in which the cost and revenue has stabilized and as such common size analysis can actually work right so let's say if we uh, you know do a historical analysis of cost of goods sold versus revenue maybe it comes up to be let's say 40 percent now if the ranges might obviously differ between 40 to let's say 60 right but more or less those 60 percent or those one-off years are going to be very less right now 
This is the effort matrix because nobody really talks about this. None of the researchers actually tell you this, but 80% of your time to make this financial model has to be done first of all on revenue, right? Because that is where the conviction of the financial model actually comes, right? Uh, now, when I'm saying revenue, it also means that you are also understanding at the same time, 10% effort to be put in estimating what kind of assets the company is going to purchase in the coming three to five years, right? Working capital assumptions, you can spend about 5%. Debt assumptions, about 5%, right? So that makes us the 100% of the effort in which you can clearly see where uh, my suggestion lies. My suggestion lies in you understanding the revenue properly, right? Now, when I'll take you through the Titan research model, you'll realize that why I am saying so. Okay, now let's move on. So just summarizing on the flow of the model. So first is obviously the data entry where, you know, depending on the kind of company that you're forecasting and what kind of data in which form is it available, right? You do the data entry part. Then you are trying to forecast the income statement balance sheet and cash flow to derive the free cash flow to the firm. We will find the present value of the FCFF, which will give us the discounted cash flow value, which is since we are forecasting FCFF, we're going to get on to price value. And from on to price value, uh, adding the debt and reducing the cash or minus doing the debt plus adding the cash can also give you the equity value, which will finally give you the intrinsic value, right? Whether we use FCFF or FCFE will depend on the company, right? Generally speaking, FCFF works well because you can always find out the enterprise value and from there you can uh, arrive at the uh, equity value. But let's say if the uh, debt value of the company, let's say the overall debt structure of the company is very less, right? So uh, there is a good chance that, uh, you know, you, it might not be required for you to run the FCFF model. You can actually just start with FCF, right? So depends upon whether what are the sources of the capital for the company, right? Moving on. Now, how do you go about researching, uh, you know, any company that you are trying to build a DCF valuation model on? So first of all, is to get a broader level understanding of the industry, right? So what is the company trying to do in this industry? So if you are talking about, let's say, banking industry, and if you, let's say, take HDFC bank, or let's say, if you're talking about the auto ancillary com uh, companies, if you're talking about Excite, if you're talking about IT companies, then what is uh, the game plan of persistent, right? In a similar manner, at the same level, you also are trying to do all the competitor analysis, trying to run the basic ratios, right? The reason why you do the ratio analysis at this stage is to understand if there is anything which is slightly different for the company in question, right? So let's say, uh, we are looking at the IT industry and we see persistent versus let's say we are looking at emphasis. So is the selling general and admin expenses slightly higher for emphasis? Then why? Right. So the, the reason why this becomes very critical to understand is because that's what the moat of the company you're trying to get. Right. Because if you do not, if the company does not have a game plan and is exactly the copy of any other company, then there is no re requirement for do a valuation, right? You can just do a relative valuation and you can get on with, uh, you know, investing in the sector, right? And it might also be make sense that just to take the industry sector index and invest on it, right? But if you are specifically looking at a company, you're trying to find out what does this company do different, which uh, is probably increasing its margin or decreasing its margin, right? And then finally, from there, you come down to the revenue side, right? In which you're trying to break down, you know, the entire revenue segments of revenue into price into quantity metric, right? So for example, in case of an IT industry, it is nothing but billing rate uh, per hour multiplied by the number of hours of billable available. If you're looking at, let's say, aviation company, then you are looking at available uh, sales seat kilometers, and also you're looking at revenue passenger kilometers, right? If you're looking at, let's say Titan, which is a consumer discretionary company, then you're looking at a average revenue per square feet multiplied by total square feet available, right? So now this is where once you have broken down the revenue into price into quantity, then the research has to happen on the price and the quantity, right? Which, which uh, is not that difficult, but 
you know if you if if you directly jump to the breaking down of revenue without doing the first and the second part it will be very difficult to for you to get any conviction out in the third step okay now let's look at the revenue structure okay so once we forecast let's say we are sitting in fy23 financial year 23 and we are forecasting for 3 years right 3 to 5 years is the max explicit forecast you know manually you can forecast right beyond that uh, it becomes very difficult so you can you will have to assume something for the perpetual future right now that can be done using various models so if let's say it's a company in an industry which is growing then you can use a two stage model three stage model if the company is a mature company already then you can do a two stage model in which you have one part is explicit forecast and the other is perpetual value when you combine this perpetual value and the forecasted free cash flow together that gives you the intrinsic value all right now let's look at the various revenue drivers for various industry this is just giving you an overview that uh, you know what is the basic business model behind any of these sectors so if you look at it it is you know it's not actually creating softwares but it's actually giving resources to companies who want to build software and then we build the client on an hourly basis right and then we multiply by the number of developers or resources that we have and we cal calculate the total capacity of hours which are available with us right so a retail industry if you look at then it is majorly the area right how much area do you have in which you can put products and you can sell so if you look at supermarkets then it's not really the amount of products that you are selling because that data will never be available but you will definitely have the number of stores and what is the size of the stores right so that is where the square feet comes in and how much revenue are we generating per square feet for any of the segments or the types of stores that we have when we look at oil and gas it is capacity utilization is majorly capacity utilization because how much capacity of gas can you actually supply through this pipeline right so that's my capacity utilization capacity then how much of it is actually expected to be utilized in a specific period and then what is the rate that we are charging to transmit that gas right so i'm just giving you an oil and gas example so that you understand that in any of these uh, segments right majorly these are very high on leverage right because they have huge plants uh, they've taken a lot of financial leverage and the company usually will do very well when it's a booming economy right for example steel production is the, the highest so if if a company has a higher capacity then its economies of scale will kick in and the cost per unit will be low and the per unit sale in terms of volume will be higher right when we look at auto you know automobile sector then we are looking at segment production right two wheelers four wheelers four wheelers types of four wheelers you know suv uh, you can look at hatchbacks you can look at sedans and then you're looking at average price per segment right of course capacity will also kick in here uh, so uh, automobile segment is probably a mixture of oil and gas and also the average price per segment right when you're looking at telecom e-commerce or any ott like netflix then we are looking at the total number of subscribers multiplied by the average revenue per unit that the subscriber is actually giving us and when we look at banks it's majorly the net interest margin you know the amount of uh, savings account that we have so that's the source of capital and, uh, and probably the savings banking account we're giving them 4% and we are lending it out at 8% so our net interest margin becomes 8% minus 4% divided by the total assets right so that is the revenue model for various industries 